Hello, Internet. I am Lady Genevieve, and today I am joined by the Slovenian rock band Joker Out, or at least four of the Jokers. Where is he right now? I <laughs> want the four of you to choose what you want your interview to look like. So I made two custom backgrounds, and you get to choose which one you want it to be. So option number one, I looked at your Twitter account, and I saw that the first account that you're following is Britney Spears. So if you would like, you can have Miss Britney behind you. Or I've heard you guys describe yourselves as shygadelic. So the other option is... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 baby. No doubt. Yeah, we'll take this one. Pokemon. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I figured, you know, it'll be like a customizable, make your own interview type situation instead of... Very, yeah, very thoughtful. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. I like a lot of new groups. All the Beatles and the Beards. You have two guitarists in your lineup, which is not always a conventional way of doing things. Like if you have a four piece, it's usually singer, guitar, bassist, drums. If you have five, usually somebody's maybe like on keyboards. So what is the musical purpose of having two guitarists? Is one of you doing lead guitar and rhythm guitar or what? do the two of you contribute to the overall sound that's different from each other? <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> that's a really good question. Yeah, that's a, that's um, good we, we really never really put much thought into why two guitars from the start. It wasn't like... Because we both played guitars. That's, yeah. that's why. <laughs> it wasn't like methodically thought out that yeah. we need to have two guitars for our sound. We were just like... We both wanted to play in a band and we were both guitarists. So that's how it ended up. And it really influenced our style, I guess. Um, our our songs are always made so that you cannot really play them or do them justice if you play them with only one guitar. Sometimes even me and Jan can't do enough justice when we're performing live to some recordings we did because there are so many guitars that we have to have maybe Boy and the singer play some guitar or have some, I don't know, something in the back as well but it's um well, well i don't know we, we, we i think we have kind of kind of very different uh, musical backgrounds um like okay maybe our our common point is is british rock and roll but uh, we have a different style of playing guitar and uh, fortunately since we're playing for so long together it's um they they match really really well i think i think we're 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 a cool cool duet yeah but we don't really usually distinct ourselves to someone only being a rhythm guitar player and someone only being a lead guitar player we kind of interchange mm -hmm. but i'm the one that the, 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 the solos <laughs> have you never been asked that question what sorry have you never been asked that question no, maybe no. no. Well, maybe definitely Slovenia. not since maybe by we, a friend. Yeah, I mean, definitely not since we've started the Eurovision journey because yeah. nobody's interested in that. So, Ooh. congrats. Ooh. They all want to know where her name comes from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did look through your older catalog, and I know that some of the members of the current lineup were not in the lineup when your older songs were first released because I was watching your music videos and I had questions about making those because uh, I know that you can see a clear difference from the beginning of your musical journey to where you're at now as far as the resources that you clearly have available for doing a music video shoot. So uh, if we go back to your very first single, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. I was curious about where you filmed this because there were some really interesting I don't know if it's graffiti or a mural, like the Batman graffiti with the Wu-Tang logo. And I was like, oh, what, what is that? That's cool. So if you want to dig into the old old school memories of, of doing your first music video shoot. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. I don't know what the fuck she's saying, but girl, I am living. It's yeah, it is. A, it's from from a time before uh, you or Natsa joined us. Um, it was actually the first song we ever recorded. We, It was in 2016, in the beginning of May of 2016, we formed the band and then one month later, we went to the studio to record this song. And, and then the music video 
<laughs> was recorded in Jan's hometown, Vrhnika, right. um, because there's an abandoned pool there. Yeah, which uh, which is no longer with us. Ah, it's they, been taken like, down. Yeah, they detonated it with some kind of dynamite. <laughs> It's, it's, it's quite because sad, but it's because too many and... shitty young bands were recording music yeah. videos there. <laughs> That's actually true. I think at least ten bands filmed the music video in, in that abandoned, in abandoned pool. pool. Yeah, yeah. Chuki wow. also. <laughs> Chuki. But Chuki. it's it's not it's not the abandoned abandoned pool part. That's wow. It's the the fact that it's been really it has really cool graffiti. And in the middle of the pool, there was this heart. Um, which was perfect for our music video because the direct translation of it is um, like the heart which Be, uh, like it pumps, the part. Blood, yeah. pumps the blood. Pumps the blood yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Google Translate said like a heart that drives blood. So I, yeah, I didn't okay. know if that was yeah. accurate. Google Translate is very hit or miss. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. how did you approach creating music videos just in a general sense when you were that early on in your career? Because I don't know if you were signed to a label at that point or if you're even signed to a label now. You scroll down to the bottom of your music videos and the first one had no claim on it. The other ones had a claim that said, believe music. And then your most recent single says universal. And I was like, uh oh, did they, did they sign to a, a mega corporation? I don't know. Can you offer any insight into that? Wow, you've, you've been really thorough. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, um, on paper, we are still independent. We, we work with digital distributors because there is no other way of getting your music on Spotify and um, Apple Music and stuff like that. And Concert Say So, the first uh, video isn't, has, doesn't have a claim because it, it, it was never uploaded to any um, streaming service. It was only ever uploaded to YouTube um, and the rest uh, were. Um, We've been independent and Believe was our previous digital distributor, uh, which we're still kind of working with. Anyway, um, we, um, we all of the music videos and all of the music we recorded and like uh, produced ourselves, it was always us and a, a music video producer sitting in the rehearsal space or somewhere and just throwing out ideas of what we want to do um, for the music video. And that's... All, all of the music videos were kind of created like that. But in, the, in like, as time went on, we got a little more money to spend on some of the music videos. Because when did you, well, I was going to ask about, I don't know how to pronounce his surname, but his first name is Mark, P-I-R-C. Yes. Yeah, Mark is actually oh, is he here. Hi. <laughs> When I was going through sequentially, there was this huge jump in quality from Omam Lien Otello to, to Gola. It was like night and day because I'm not trying to talk yeah. shit or anything, but the second music video, I don't know. Some of the shots, it was like, is the camera on autofocus? It looks weird. I don't know if the frame rate is too high or if it's like a motion smoothing thing. It just looks really weird. And then all the other videos after that, his name was attached to a lot of them either in the video or in the description box. So clearly yes. he. Well, that's Mark. We, we've been collaborating with him since, since Gola. Since Gola, September of 2019. And he's done all of our music videos since then. And he's even become a much more important member of our band. He, he, I, we would characterize him as a creative director right now because he participates in all of our visual visual en endeavors let's say uh, also for the album cover of um, of last year's album we're doing a, a youtube series with him right now documenting all of our trips around europe so he's a really integral part of the band sometimes we call him the sixth joker <laughs> it was definitely noticeable oh god i don't know how to say this <laughs> The single of yours, that's also the name of your first album. I was going to ask, why was that chosen as the titular track? Because you have many songs to choose from. Why is that the one that became the title of the album? <laughs> it's kind of... Umazani <laughs> Misli, you mean. Mm. Um, that's kind of the song that is, I think, the most shagadelic one uh, among all of the... Uh, songs from that album 
and it's i think it was the was it the latest the last single before no the, it wasn't it was because asanti povedo came after yeah but it it, uh, it it soon became a, a, a big a big um, success i mean and and the 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 title of the song mazani misli kind of encapsulates the, mo the 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 best like what the whole album is trying to uh, trying to tell yeah the translation means, yeah. yeah it like, means dirty thoughts or indecent notions to put yeah. it more poetically you mentioned your next one uh, asemti povedal which one of you or maybe the person's not in the band anymore i don't know was smudging the lipstick on the girl's face i know i'm going deep cut i saw that i was like oh i want to know who that is what Or was it you? Uh, no. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Uh, was it you? Uh, oh, it was Boan. It was oh, Boan, Boan, right? Was Boan. Yeah, it was Boan. He had the, his shot was in your apartment? Yeah. Because yeah. I was going to ask, is it even somebody in the band? Because sometimes in filmmaking, when they're doing hand shots, it won't even be the actor whose hand it's supposed to be because the actor's super important, so they're not going to be there for that. Like in Batman versus Superman, there's this shot of Bruce Wayne handling his phone, and those are not Ben Affleck's hands. Those are Zack Snyder's hands. And he was I'm like, I'll just do it myself, so. Yes. Yeah, we hired the boy on hand model. <laughs> I can't double. I noticed um, in some of your more recent music videos that you seem to really be heavily leaning into this vintage aesthetic. The music videos have a four by three aspect ratio and there's like certain, I'm assuming it's a filter. I don't know what cameras you're using. You don't shoot on film, right? You shoot on digital. Yeah. yeah. The effect with the film grain, I clocked that immediately. I was going to ask about, was there a certain conversation that you had to really lean in hard to the vintage aesthetic to visually convey what your songs are doing as a band. Mark, you should tell that. Yeah. I don't remember when we started like actively putting all those filters you're talking about. Maybe it was Barba Tsana. Yes, that's the story. Yeah, I mean, we wanted, we wanted our music videos to be a bit more... Um, nostalgic retro just like we think our music is uh, in a sort of sense i guess so um we we wanted to draw back a little bit on the modern stuff and just try to be try to catch those 60s and 70s aesthetics and uh, apparently we've done at least a okay job of it if you've noticed i see you uh, holding in that video is it just like a slab of green screen did you guys paint uh no we just throw a key down the, the no but paper. did you paint did you paint the oh, no, that was uh, paper it was paper it's just green, green paper, paper. <laughs> yeah, green screen paper okay i mean that works were you filming that inside or outside because i noticed there's you know this patch of dirt below you but i was like well that could be outside or maybe they just threw some dirt on the ground inside of the studio Run some dirt in it. how was that filmed what would you say well i don't know enough about lighting to know what makes more sense i film youtube videos i don't film <laughs> on a set so like I, i have no idea about expensive lighting well it was all done in uh in mark's uh, studio um mm. I think the the whole video was recorded in in an hour, just just after the the photo shoots for the album cover. We just decided to to film the music video for the, the money. And yeah, uh, we, we had some guys that just like dug out some patches of of grass and uh, stinging nettle, yeah. so it it could burn it, our feet for the whole day. To be extra demonic. <laughs> to, to, be, to be extra demonic. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know how much the, the lighting costs. <laughs> not paper, nothing. Not <laughs> paper, nothing. I feel like the two gentlemen in the back have been a little quiet, so I'm going to need the two of you to contribute as well. <laughs> Nace, you're the newest member of this lineup of the band, and I was curious about if you had been in any other 
music projects that would have you in music videos before joining the band? Because I don't think you were in any of the videos before Carpe Diem. I was trying to follow everyone's faces, but no, this all got scheduled very last minute. I didn't get to do that much research. <laughs> no, yeah, I was. I also was in a couple of other video shoots. But I, I mostly work as a like studio musician, musician in Slovenia. So I played with a lot of different artists and in, in a lot of different for for those videos of those shoots. Yeah, that's and a couple of live live recordings. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Master question for the drummer. It's not even just a question. It's more of a comment. My mother watches everything that I post on YouTube. So when I told her I was going to do this interview, so I showed her the video of your guys' performance of Carpe Diem, and I thought she was going to give me really insightful feedback because she's a professional musician. And the only comment she had was that she was laughing at the drummer because she thought he was so, like, she thought he was so funny and entertaining and energetic. And I was like, that's your feedback? But yeah, so... <laughs> Thanks, you, you entertained my mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice to hear. That's something that she likes to do. <laughs> but to pivot it into a question, though, you do have, I mean, this is partially for you, but also partially for all of you. You have very good presence on camera, which is not necessarily the same skill set as performing live to an audience. So... Was this a skill set that you've developed over time or was this something that you took any type of training to make sure that you knew how to do well? Because you do it like you like you understand what performing on camera is, because it is different from just projecting outward to a, a, a large audience. Well, I think it's pretty similar than our live concerts. I would say probably we are not faking it you know if if you would uh, start uh, um, practicing the thing and how to watch the camera and how to act probably it would not be so organic mm -hmm. um, you just so, have to imagine the cameras are the fans you are looking at yeah you just <laughs> have to enjoy and we have fun together and i think this is it this is the the recipe so in conclusion really we didn't we didn't practice. We, I, I guess, we just knew we had to attack the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> All genuine emotions. What does SSF mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, so, uh, sorry, that's really funny to us. Uh, we can't say it's a it's, it's a, a Slovenian secret mantra. So, yeah. And it only works as a mantra if it stays secret. Yeah. So it does mean something. It's not just yeah, drunken it ramblings. Of course yeah. it does, but it's it's coded. I think we're the only Slovenians that only um, only people on earth that know the true essence, the true meaning behind Sisyfa. <laughs> okay. Well, that's extremely <laughs> unhelpful, but I at least made an attempt to ask You're the not question. With that end. <laughs> no, of course not. I don't ask questions to not get answers, but that's all right. I mean, I'm not going to twist your arm about it. You mentioned being independent. Do you plan on staying that way? Because I'm sure when you start to get more attention internationally, offers start to come in. And I wasn't sure if it's something that you had thoughts about because I don't know, the music industry is kind of in a weird place and there's a lot of opinions about just all the different ways you can navigate a career. Um, well, we're not completely against having a label. Um, they do have their own benefits. And definitely trying to break into the international market poses a, a, a much greater challenge without uh, the backing of a label. Um, but we won't assign to whichever label at any cost. We'll, we'll see what happens where we stand after Eurovision when the offers pour in. Uh, if they do, and we'll decide then. We really don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as, you know, you read the fine print, read, read your contracts or, or oh, your offered contracts. Yeah, I mean, there, there have been loads of label in, la labels in Slovenia which had wanted, have wanted to sign us in the past six, seven years. And we've denied all of them because we 
we read it and we saw that it's they couldn't provide what we would want. So I I don't have a doubt that even if a bigger label comes, we'll succumb to the pressure. You've got an upcoming release with Elvis Costello, which I believe is an English version of one of your past singles. I think I wrote it down. Is it yes, a, yes. a of it all? Or was it a different one? No, no. no. It's actually no. not about the last song from the second album. Uh, so new okay. Wave means... Uh, not Ivan means new wave. Yeah, and that's what yeah, the, that's... the song is going to be called. And it's coming out really soon on the 20, 21st of April. So uh, we've just come from Liverpool like a week ago um, because we recorded the music video over there. And I'm I'm thinking you're going to appreciate what we did for that music video as well. Um, <laughs> it kind of, in some sense, it, it has a connection to what we did in Katrina. Mm. But it's a bit more... A little less green. A little less green. You have to forgive me for messing up which song it was, because like I told you, this all got booked very last minute and I didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of research. I'm very, I was no very I think, you still, I think you still did more research than half of the interviews we've had so far. <laughs> more, more than half. More than yeah, half. more than half. Oh, oh, we love the shade. <laughs> I have my tea. I have my tea, so, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> being that you have this vintage aesthetic and you've mentioned different artistic influences the Beatles have come up from time to time so I was going to ask if each of you had a favorite Beatles song yeah Thanks, man. oh that's thanks man that's a cool one yeah it's a really good one, good one. It's a good one. I mean, I can't, I can't limit myself to only one Beatles song. Yeah. Blackbird. Oh. You could pick no. a couple. I mean, I, can, you, I, know, can, I'm you don't I have all day, but like you could pick more than one. I have two. Um, I'll, I'll just pick a whole album, Magical Mystery Tour. Okay. That's my favorite. I would say Michelle, Eleanor Rigby, Ooh. and Sun King. Yurek? Yurek doesn't know who the Beatles are. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I would choose the Help album. Help. Okay. Yeah. Classic. Classic. Mine are, are Lady Madonna and Eleanor Rigby. Oh! Twins. Twinsies. <laughs> Clearly I like the drama, you know? I like that <laughs> they've got more going on. Because I just feel like you can tell the difference from their earlier stuff. It's like, you know, a little more simplistic in its composition. And then you get to how many years later and you can tell oh now they've been doing this for a while now they've you know and also been doing other stuff <laughs> <laughs> i mean i wasn't gonna say it but now you said it i don't want to take up too much of your time so i might just cap it there but if ever you guys want to come back feel free i'll try to do more research next time and be, and we'll, be more we'll try awake. to bring boy. Yeah. we'll try to bring boy next time uh, thank you so much i mean this interview was really was like a quite fresh air yeah it was yeah. really refreshing because we've been doing so many eurovision interviews and everybody's just asking us what's going to be happening in liverpool are you guys enjoying the pre-parties so what does your name mean and your questions were really um okay. yeah. yeah and challenging also <laughs> oh well if people are always asking you about your name who is your favorite <laughs> joker oh heath ledger I didn't w watch Batman movies. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm very no, sorry, I but I, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan. Boo! Tomato, tomato, tomato. I'm throwing tomatoes. Nazi, you're a movie fan. Yeah, yeah, you're a movie fan. Come on, Heath Ledger. Okay, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> Here's yeah. the thing. Everybody says Heath Ledger, but that is the correct answer. I was always a Heath Ledger stan. Like, I was a Heath Ledger stan before he became the Joker. 10 Things I Hate About You, Brothers Grimm, Casanova. I could never say anybody else besides him, so. Of course. Ta-da! It's...